Well, good everybody. Sam Marwood here from Cultivate Farms, uh, and we have on the other end Robert Herman from Mercado Market Analysis. Robert's been a great supporter of Cultivate Farms nearly from the start, uh, and what we've been wanting to do is regular catch ups. This is our this is our second Robert to talk specifically around. Uh, the agricultural markets uh, because we know as aspiring farmers you need to be on top of what's happening uh, with commodities uh, with uh, the price of the things that you're going to be selling when you're on your dream farm. Um, so this is the point of today's update. Robert, thank you for your time. No worries. It's good to see you and good to hear that uh, Cultivate Farms is uh, up and at it and going well. Thanks, mate. And, it's, uh, and to remind people, when you become a member, you get Mercado uh, uh, membership for free, uh, which is valued at, I think it's around 300 bucks, isn't it, Robert? So it's a um, pretty amazing deal. Uh, so massive support, mate, and we really appreciate it. So, well, I've got a few questions I want to unpack. So this is, I love this sort of stuff because I need to get my head around the markets as well, uh, and it's probably an area that I'm deficient in, and that's what we're trying to do with Cultivate Farms is get people to understand all the aspects of farming and make sure they're thinking about it constantly. So these questions uh, are really interesting for me and hopefully for you guys as well and hopefully encourages you to do some more research yourself. So I've got a question on each of these topics around grain, beef and wool. Robert, are you ready? I'm ready. It's, it sounds like a hard quiz. <laughs> right, probably not as funny. Uh, all right, so grain prices, mate, they're, uh, they're not looking very good. Uh, when are they, what date are they going to recover? Well, it's a, it's a good observation that uh, grain prices aren't the best in, at, that we've seen over the lifetime, but um, th there's a reason for that. And, of course, there's always a reason. If we understand the reasons, then sometimes we can understand what the future's going to hold. So the main reason that we have um, lower-than-average grain prices uh, around the world is that we have higher-than-average grain stocks. Um, the world is a... The, the grain is produced all around the world. You know, it's a, it's a unique product... Uh, which means that given the varying climates around the world, it's getting harvested and planted all year round. So um, you're constantly getting updates of uh, production. We haven't had any real disasters in the world in terms of droughts or failed crops for a number of years now, three or four years. And what that means is that um, the production's been good and so the stocks are building. So people are storing more grain. When there's more grain in storage... The buyers aren't so concerned, so they don't have to bid up, um, and the grain keeps flowing. One thing for your um, members to watch, uh, Sam, is that a lot of grain is coming, a lot of uh, additional grain is coming out of Russia and, uh, and the Black Sea area. And that'll continue because while there have always been grain producers, it's only in recent times that they've copied um, US and Australian models of farming, which have increased their productivity. So that's going to keep going. But the good news for Australian grain farmers is that because the grain business is so efficient and, and runs on a, with a lot of science and a lot of technology behind it, um, people are producing more grain per 100 millimetres of rainfall now and more grain per hectare. And, of course, that's compensating for the lower prices. Mm. Long, long answer to a short question, Sam. So, so have you got a date, Robert, is it, or is it, uh, are we waiting for the next big uh, um, massive drought or hurricane? Yeah, look, it's a good, it's a good question. I don't, I don't have the date, but I do know that um, one other thing that happens with grain markets is it traded a lot on futures exchanges, and futures exchanges get worried about all sorts of little things. So as soon as we see a failed crop coming, the futures market will react quickly and that will see prices go up quickly. So watch out for, especially in the US. Uh, and at the moment, there's some discussion about the seas is not quite so good in some areas, Kansas and places like that. Watch carefully for that, and that'll push the prices up. But if you're a grain farmer here in Australia, you know, what you do is you stick to your knitting, you get on with it, and you just plant it and grow it as efficiently as you can. What about beef? Um, so the prices are pretty good, Robert, at the moment. Um, what are the challenges for the beef industry uh, that you can see? Yeah, look, and beef, again, is an internationally traded commodity, an internationally produced commodity. And we wrote an article not long ago that um, talked about the um, issue that the Indian government had banned the export of buffalo. And, uh, you know, so, so and that impacted on the beef market. Uh, South America has a lot of beef. Um, 
Japan and Korea uh, are the big meat, beef markets for Australia. They're the high quality ones and the high value ones, but they will only take beef from the US and Australia. So there's all these um, little nuances in the market that um, um, influence the price. Generally speaking, we're, we're going to see in Australia um, a, beef, a herd rebuild, and um, that's on the back of the last drought where we sold a lot of the herd off. Um, when the season recovers, um, the herd will rebuild, and that will mean that there won't be as many stocks sold. There'll be more kept, more females kept. So that'll help the market. The, the place to watch in Australia is what's happening in Queensland. What happening, you know, Queensland sneezes, the rest of the country catches a cold as far as cattle is concerned. So if we get good rains in Queensland, which we're seeing now, um, and that continues for a little while, then you'll find that that will be positive for the beef market. If the rain doesn't follow up, doesn't keep coming, uh, then they'll start selling off again and, and flood the market. So keep an eye on Queensland. Mm. I love these little uh, tidbits you're throwing in here, Robert, um, with general uh, general things that we should know for the rest of our lives in farming. That's that's great around Queensland. Love that. Haven't heard that before. Uh, all right, let's uh, round it off. Uh, wool and sheep, uh, they're riding high at the moment. Um, what's your prediction on whether that can be maintained? Well, that's a, it's a $64 question. Um, Australia used to ride on the sheep's back. That was the saying. You know, that was the throwaway line. A lot of the inland of Australia was opened up on the back of sheep, and merino sheep especially. And now we're back to that stage again. Um, so there's two parts to sheep. One is that um, you can shear them and sell the wool. So the wool market um, has declined in volume quite significantly. Um, almost one third of the merino fleece that was produced 15 years ago disappeared. And most of it went into farming land that went for cropping and some went to prime lambs. So the, the market is really undersupplied. Um, that said, it, the prices are fantastic. But wool is a commodity that uh, it's a discretionary spend. You know, we don't have to actually go and buy something that's made out of wool. So it has to compete with other fibres. And so synthetics and cotton are the competitors. And at the moment, um, you know, our prices, nobody says too much about it, but our prices are a bit prohibited prohibitive at these levels. So I'm a bit concerned about the um, holding these prices, but then you start to say, well, how far could they fall? And given the tight supply, of tight supply everywhere in the world, there's no excess wool anywhere, sheep numbers have been declining, then they're unlikely to fall a long way. So I guess the answer is, this is a really good price. If you've got some wool, sell it. Um, if you're growing wool, then you're going to get good prices going forward, but perhaps not quite at these levels. Mm. Robert, this is brilliant. Um, where can people go? To, you talked about a blog, and I know you guys pump out a lot of great content. Where should people go to find out more? Well, we, we'd love people just to follow us on um, just Google Mercado. Yep. Uh, and even uh, you mentioned about getting information. We, we get um, inquiries every day for specific Topic. So people saying, what about sheep or what about cattle in my area or, or what do you think? And we love that because it, it not only gives us a chance to um, answer some pretty specific questions, it also tells us what people are thinking about out in the field. And if someone's asking the question, then it's likely that others are, are thinking that way and we can uh, do some research on that. Can I just – I didn't mention sheep, mutton nice. and lamb. Um, Sam, I think – these, that product, the, the, the humble old sheep in Australia, in going forward is going to be um, the, golden, uh, the golden nugget for agriculture. Now, but be, and, and one of the things, if you note, we mentioned about wheat and cattle where they're internationally produced. Everyone in the world's got some cattle and, and, and beef to sell and wheat to sell. There's only two countries that export uh, any significant amounts of uh, mutton and lamb and that's New Zealand and Australia. And mm. both have low stock numbers now, and, um, and the world's looking for more. You know, as the world grows and as populations get more um, spending money, then they're looking for more of this product. So sheep are the big one. But the problem is, in Australia, that sheep are difficult to handle. You know, you've got to actually get labour. You've got to have people who can do things. It's, uh, it's a bit different to sitting on a tractor and planting a crop. So... The challenge is there, but the rewards, you know, will be. I think that 
the sheep meat product is a story that um, we're going to be talking about for a long time. It is really interesting. I was doing some research um, just for a farm we're helping to support around um, sheep and wool. And yeah, we saw these graphs showing all exports and it is just Australia and New Zealand. I didn't realize that, that we're the ones doing the exports. So that's a really, a really good insight, uh, Robert. Uh, mate, we're going to have to do this again very soon. I uh, appreciate your time. Uh, and a reminder, if you become a Cultivate Farms member, you get the Mercado uh, analysis, daily uh, analysis in your inbox. So you become learned uh, and an awesome farmer. Uh, Robert, thanks for your time, mate, and we'll speak very soon. Great to talk to you, Sam. Thanks. Cheers, mate.